everybody, this is Ross. Um, we're here early morning off the coast of Jersey. We're on the, by the beach, actually only a block away from the bay. Um, so there's a lot of salt air that comes in here. It's quite windy. Um, and this is at my parents' place here in, uh, in Jersey. So um, this is a fig that we planted for them. Um, I want to say three-ish years ago. Um, the tree was already two years old already when we planted it, and now this is its third year. That's, I think, a pretty accurate description. Um, they got some figs last year that mostly the birds got, and they also got some figs the year before that mostly the birds got. Um, but now in its third year, it should start producing pretty well. And you can tell it's already, you know, it's not even June yet, and the tree looks fantastic with the amount of growth it has with all these new shoots. Um, some of these I can already pinch, and I think I might either today or if they come down here next weekend, um, they can do that themselves, which I already taught my mom how to do. There's about two shoots back here that are more vigorous than others, and overall, though, there's a lot of shoots on it. And that's just, you know, normally what these trees do is put out too many shoots, but um, it's not a big deal because I kind of want this tree to grow to a bigger size, get more mature, more established, because the soil here is all sand. And that's kind of what I want to talk about in today's video is the differences between, you know, growing figs here at the beach versus growing them um, at home where we have lots of clay and the weather is just very different, right? We don't have that salt air. We don't have nearly as much wind. Um, and we, I think, honestly, we get more heat during the summer. It's, uh, it's warmer because the ocean air kind of cools things off a bit. But the season here is more mild in the wintertime. It's more mild in the summer, but they have a longer season. So this tree, as an example, is way far ahead compared to my other in-ground trees at home. And the reason for that is largely just because they have an extended season here. The beginning of the season just happens a lot sooner. Um, now I've done the same exact methods of planting with the exception that we've mounted this up. It is about a good six inches off the ground um, from grade. Ideally we could have went even higher um, to a foot. In fact, the higher we can go, the better, I'd argue here. Um, now, we've also, the only difference though is that instead of just putting our native clay around it and mounting up that native clay, we have uh, put down some additional compost on top of the native soil here, just because it is so sandy and it doesn't hold a lot of water and it just is going to really help with this tree getting established. Um, you know, where it could take 10 years here, believe it or not, it could take, you know, seven to 10 years. Um, I think we're cutting that process down a little bit by giving it a little bit of compost and that certainly helped. And then I, we also mulched it, but you don't want to mulch these things, right? We want to keep the, the soil temperatures warm. Um, so we put down rocks and it's been doing really well with this, this uh, way of planting as I do at home. Um, we haven't really watered it all that much. We haven't fed it all that much. And that's sort of with the philosophy that I have with keeping this tree alive through the winter time is we don't want a whole lot of growth every year because we need it to harden off. We don't want that water into August. We don't want that feeding into August. So this tree has survived every year since I planted it. It's a Marseille black from VS, hardy Chicago type. And we're in zone 7A, believe it or not. So all the non-believers out there who keep telling me you can't grow figs in unprotected in 7A, you're just wrong. Um, so <laughs> this is living proof. And I've seen many trees actually in like Princeton, in the Philadelphia area that uh, are not close to the beach and are in 7A and still do well unprotected. So, um, what we're actually gonna to do today is plant another fig. Um, I have either, it's either an LDA, a Long Dedute, or a Ronde Bordeaux. 
Um, my naming convention on this one was just wrong and I don't know exactly what it is because <laughs> I have two tags. Don't ask me why I have two. But um, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're gonna plant one of those two varieties. Either one should do well here. Um, I would rather have uh, Long de Dute than Ron de Bordeaux and I actually think that's what this is. And because it is my parents' place, I don't mind that it's mislabeled. So we're gonna actually plant another one here um, as my parents want more figs because they're impatient and want a larger tree very, very quickly as most American families do. So um, this just takes time, guys. And you know, the slower we do this is okay, but um, I, I am taking that approach this year, as I said, of getting this leafed out and uh, growing in many different directions to get this tree more established um, quicker. And I would imagine next year is really when the production is going to be phenomenal. Although this tree this year, if they're here at the time that they ripen, I mean, the birds get them because they're not usually here. But, you know, this tree is going to put out at least 50 um, up to 100 figs. If you count the number of shoots on here, I can already pinch some of these now. We'll get fruit probably by early August. Um, on a couple of these branches, there's about three branches we could pinch right now. And then if the rest of these reach maturity, I mean, there's you're looking at, I don't know, about 20 more shoots, maybe 25 shoots. If each shoot puts out about five to six fruits, that's a lot of fruit, right? So um, yeah, they just have to be here and they have to net the thing, keep it away from the birds and also the neighbors. <laughs> the neighbors like these things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is we're planting another one. We got the style of planting, we're pinching, we're doing all the same techniques. It's just that it is amazing how much further this tree is ahead of my trees at home that are unprotected and uh, what the differences are here between the soil and the climate um, and how that sort of changes things for us. Um, I'd rather actually have the sand than the clay simply because the sand is so well draining that um, you're gonna actually have better quality fruits here than you would at home with the clay because it just holds so much water and that water in the soil is just reducing the bricks of the fruits. So they're gonna be real happy real soon and they don't even know it. Um, but to get them another tree, I think it's gonna be, <laughs> is even better. So, um, you know, it's just amazing, I think, how well, if you guys live on the coast, how well these figs are gonna do for you. Just keep them out of the wind, put them in a sunny spot, increase the soil temperatures, give them a little bit of water, just to get them established, not a whole lot, and you'll be fine. So thank you guys here for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, give us a subscribe and uh, check out the blog, guys, figboss.com. We'll see everybody soon. Take care.